so so grateful to I Am Soldier, Ashley, for all that you do uh, for putting this event together for Talea and the amazing teachers that are participating, the people who worked on the back end, everyone who's contributed to this, um, and particularly in the time that we're in now, it's just so, so crucial that we can rely on community. Uh, Talea meant so much to me. Her, she was so inspirational. Her, her joy, her creativity. It was just so great to, to witness. Um, so as I begin to think about today, the meditation as we go into just some of the breath work, uh, to those who are driving, uh, don't close your eyes, don't do this meditation at this moment. Uh, but those who have the opportunity in the space where you are safe, uh, let's drop in a little bit, breathing through the nose, big inhale, and exhale. Big breath through the nose, inhale. And exhale. On the next one, we're going to hold it at the top. So just relaxing that parasympathetic nervous system. Just inhale. And hold, hold, hold. And exhale, side all the way out. I'm going to play around with that breath retention. So I'm going to inhale one more time. So inhale. We're going to hold. And exhale, we're going to hold that breath out, letting the lungs be completely empty. Big inhale. We're going to hold that at the top. Hold, hold, hold. And exhale all of the air out. <sighs> and allow yourself to find this presence, this moment as we're here. For what I've realized, the greatest biohack is for the mind to let the body and for the body to convince the mind in order to free the body. <laughs> Many of us have that we find in the world have checked out of our bodies a long time ago. So it's important to really just kind of activate these five senses as we dive into the, the realm of trust. And you can have your eyes closed if you like. If you have one to have them open, it's fine as well. Um, so as I thought about activating the five senses, I wanted to kind of focus on the visual of Talea and our experience, our, our experiences with her. Um, as we activate first sense of the sound, um, realize a personal thought that you've had about her or you've heard or hearing her voice in conversation when she was alive with this, maybe you begin to focus on that. As you maintain that deep breathe, inhale, and thinking about the voice that she heard. Maybe she said something that really resonated with you. I'm sure she has, because she's such a, such a powerhouse, inspirational woman. And just focus on the sound of her voice, the gentle aspect of her voice. Now we're gonna move into the sense of touch. And maybe if you held her, you given her a hug, take your mind into that space and that time when you felt her, touched her. Bring that sense to an activation of touch. Now bring the, uh, open and activate the sense of taste, something that you love that reminds you or maybe a dinner that you had with her or something that, that uh, resembles the essence of her, something sweet, something, whatever it was, may, maybe bring your attention, your focus to that. And let's activate smell, a scent that reminds you of her, maybe the scent of her when you hugged her, you held her and you smelled her essence. Maybe you reflect on that and just bring that sensed and activate that sense. And next, let's activate the sight. Picture her. Picture an experience that stands out that you had with her. See her face, see her image. Activate sight. Inhale.
as you've activated all the senses, maybe you begin to open your eyes on the inhale. And exhale, if you wanna close your eyes on the exhale, go deeper. Now we're gonna go beyond the admiration of her and consider what she inspired within us. What does she inspire within you? I consider the senses of our innate intelligence, our blueprint to navigate the world. It's our natural right, this intelligence that we're born with, this keenness. And so when it comes to trust, this is so important. This is vital to bringing this to a head, to really navigate with the consciousness that we desire. Now I want you to consider a mountain pose. For those who are maybe not familiar with it, I'll briefly go through it. Mountain pose is the shoulders open, palms facing forward, the neck, the cervical spine aligned with the thoracic and the lumbar, quad slightly activated, you know, standing in the four corners of the feet. And just really allow yourself to embody that just in with your activations of senses. So with your senses, you're gonna draw yourself in this mountain pose and just see yourself. And through the practice of trust, what I've realized is that just as I stand, standing through whatever happens as life brings it, how can I stand? How can I trust my practice that I will have the tools that support me through the process? I wanna bring your attention to the definition that I've found with trust, belief that someone or something is reliable, good, honest, effective. Our relationship is founded on a mutual trust. So without bringing our intelligence to the table, we miss the opportunity of presence and attaining the entire experience. That's why it's so important to make our practice tangible to our lives. Yeah, I can do yoga on the mat, but how do I do yoga in life? Yeah, I can meditate and be kind and compassionate to myself in the practice of isolation, but how can I do that same thing when I'm having a hard conversation? When I'm self-reflecting, looking at my life and realizing how I can be accountable to myself, which is such another huge topic, self-accountability. Sometimes we hold the bias. So when life does hit us, so trust is hard to find because we haven't really held ourselves to that, to that accountable, to that precedent. But when we can really align ourselves with that, things begin to look a little different. Trust. Inhale, breathe. So beyond the condition we're aware of, parts that we're not, um, it's in, when, I, when I look at trust in particular, it, it just goes back to realizing the conditioning. I think sometimes we have a linear approach. I was, I was talking about this morning a book, uh, Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was talking about the ideas of how um, if you're born into an, an, an economic poverty situation, how the past un uh, unconscious uh, habits or past begin to reflect and sabotage your ability to expand into wealth, have things. And, and it's a very interesting thing because a lot of times we're, we realize that we're led by the subconscious or the unconscious, but we, we don't realize how it plays a part in all facets of our lives. And what I've learned from a teacher that I, I, I love, it's, it's, it's a formula that we begin to use to really problem solve and really put this trust to a test, put our practice to a test that enables us trust. And, and it's a simple formula that I love to share with you uh, in this moment. And, and in this formula is, what do you want to do? So what do you want to do? What do you desire? Why do you want to do it? And really being accountable to that and answering that question, why do you want to do this thing that you want to do? How do you plan on doing this thing that you want to do? Really, so you're setting aside a strategy of accomplishing this thing and not just with an idea, but it's bringing all your intelligence to the table to realize how can I strategize this to accomplish this? And then next will be, what will be the constructive result? So I'll go through that one more time. What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? What do you plan on doing? How do you plan on doing this thing that you want to do? And what will be the constructive result? 
And when you think of this, it begins to be a formula like, a, you know, Osho says this profound statement. He's like, if you believe love exists, then go out and love, and then you can see for yourself how it exists. And so when I think about the repetition, I think about the background of training. Training is executing a formula that through understanding this formula, this execution, I can later begin to, through the process, master it. So when I think about the track, you know, the track, the sprint looks the same. It's the constant mastering and looking at every aspect of my, my movement. Is it efficient? When I think about in the gym, the repetition, every rep looks the same. The push, the press looks the same. Through repetition, we master the movement. And by mastering the movement, so many things happen. We begin to expand our level of understanding, expand our possibility. What's possible for you is, is really um, an interesting question when you propose it to yourself. What, what's possible for you and who's answering that question? And what I mean by that, who's answering that question is the, is the, the person or the thought that's answering that question, have you even given yourself a true chance? So it's a very interesting aspect of that. So funny, my brother uh, Arjuna, he may be on this today. He says, when life, when life, he said, life will life you, you know? He says, when, when, when life happens, what will you do? When life lifes you, what will you do? And, and when you really do practice to repetition and, and, and really bringing your, your practice to um, an integration to your life, it's, it comes about this trust naturally happens because now you don't have to think about it because it's so ingrained into you the formula that you're calculating and creating for yourself. And through the process, you will make it authentic. I think sometimes we fight for the idea of authenticity, but we've, we've kind of been flawed from that. We've kind of not ever had that pure essence of ourselves due to the container in which we live and the container in which we were born into. So realizing a true authentic self may never happen, but we can create this, the tangibles from the standpoint of how do I want to show up in the world? And not because I'm looking to attain something in the afterlife, but because I'm choosing to be the best version of myself now. I'm choosing to be the best version of forgiveness of myself and the people around me that may be harm me or whatever that whatever's happened, I can let that go. I can be the greatest version of myself when it comes to uh, letting things go and 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 forgiving people and. And, and things like that. It's just the overall aspect of how we can level up all facets of our lives. Trust, trust. We learn trust through the experience. So everything that we know, everything that we practice, we have to put it to the test. And when we put it through the test, we find out how we can be more efficient with it. And when we put it through the test, we realize how we can master each movement with it. When I understand what I am, where I am, why I'm doing what I'm doing, my strategy behind what I'm creating. And it sounds so complex in the beginning, but through the process, it speeds up, it speeds up. And, and then now when life happens, I, I'm, I'm pre-calculated. It's like chess. Chess is a very interesting practice to play when you can implement your moves and you're thinking three, four steps ahead. But you're coming from that base fundamental of kindness, compassion, patience learning, openness, gratitude. So those who have their eyes closed, maybe you bring your hands into prayer as we just begin to finalize this, this beginning of this amazing retreat experience, this immersion of really remembering our sister Talea and all that she's done and created for us to inspire us to, to be connected and to be inspired to connect to the rest of the world in the same way expand our messages in the same way. As we end this, thank you so much for being here with us and listening to this portion of it. One big inhale. And exhale. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Keith. I love what you're saying. Um, I love how you always bring things back to the game of sport because there is that discipline that always is 
from doing sports and how do you apply that to real life? And um, I just want to give one little shout out. I noticed that um, Nick and Enzo are here with us. And Nick is, Enzo is uh, Talia's son, who's 10. He was in the picture, now he's out. And then Nick is Enzo's father. So I really appreciate you for being here. Um, and the proceeds from this whole series will be going to Enzo and his um, sister, half-sister, uh, Maya, Talia's other daughter. So, um, well, cool. Okay, well, thank you so much, Keith. And um, our next person that we have is Kiyoshi. Uh, Kiyoshi is an incredible conscious rapper, hip-hop artist, and transformational coach. Um, and I fell into him through Keith. And um, I don't know, man, he's so talented. I just, I love hearing what you have to say. And his lyrics are awesome all the time. So thank you, Kiyoshi, for being here. Um, and he'll, he'll lead us in some music. We're doing this a little bit differently this week because usually we'll have the music at the end, but because Peter is in New Zealand and the time difference, we're having Kiyoshi first. So thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, special shout out to Brother Keith. Thank you so much for that beautiful blessing. And uh, yeah, I just wanna pay honor and tribute to Talea, um, an amazing, beautiful person. And I never had the chance to meet her, but I felt like I met her because we've spoken a number of times and you know she's always spoken highly of Keith and Ashley and this. So this is a really like, it's a treat to be here. You know, I had to come here and be a part of this in honor of her. And uh, yeah, just loving the work that you do, Ashley. So continually, continually want to support you all. And yeah, just share some of my musical blessings. So today I have a song called I'm the Light. I performed this for one of the last events I did with Talea and she really enjoyed it. So I want to dedicate this to her and to all of you. It's simply a reminder of who we are at the core. You know, it's easy to get distracted and lose trust and lose sight of the bigger picture of who we truly are at the core, which is love and light. So it's just that um, affirmation. It was off my EP affirmation, EP I, I put out a number of years ago. So uh, yeah, it's helped a lot of people over, over the course of years. You know, I've got a lot of testimonials of people saying how it's brought them up to a better place. So yeah, it's one of my favorites. So it's called I'm the Light. Life is a gift to all those few who may choose to receive. Sweeter than juice from mango fruit. 